There is additional money going into a community program that protects kids on their way to and from school. Of course, a very important issue. It's called Safe Passage. Nana St. Dubonzu has more on how the program works. The Safe Passage program is not new to the district, but with the rise in crime, leaders say now more than ever is the time to make sure that young people feel safe inside the school and outside of the school building. Bye-bye. See you later, okay? There are more than 1,500 students coming in and out of check the Columbia Heights Educational Campus See you tomorrow. every day. We have to be inside the building where staff and students need our support. But outside the building, leaders here at check have some help. They are our eyes and ears outside of the building. See you tomorrow. Assistant Principal you. Dwayne... This is sad because, like, literally, this, right, like, the next block this way is the target... A Best Buy. <laughs> Marshalls. Marshalls. Chick-fil-A. LA CVS. Yeah. This is a bustling, like, um, a mall. A Major. No, nah, they turned it. It's, it's kind of a mall, but nah, not yeah. technically. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, it's 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 mallish. But mall it's, yeah. it's 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 got everything is here. I mean everything is here man and these kids need a fucking program to make sure they can walk safely to school man um because they never got rid of the people though they they gentrified the whole area but it's still it's still seedy as fuck yeah this is this is the trenches i mean yeah. the, um chv 3500 yeah, 35. yeah you know what I'm saying? that's where they all meet <laughs> That's where they all meet. <laughs> it's 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 a it's a lot of fucking notorious neighborhoods, right? Here's outside of the building. See you tomorrow. Assistant principal yeah. Dwayne Boone is referring to the men and women in these green vests. During those key transition times, before school, after school. Between 8 and 10 in the morning and 2.30 to 5.30 in the afternoon. See you. Guys like Rubio Gomez help students get to their destination safely, whether it's walking with a crowd of students heading home or to the metro. Don't stay put in the metro station no more. You have to be moving at all times. The Safe Passage program under Mayor Muriel Bowser's Office for Public Safety and Justice has three to six workers at 48 schools in high priority areas in the district and at a metro station. $8.5 million is now available from the mayor's office. Oh, Another shit. Another 85 million. Oh, shit. They paying these guys? On top of what they already, uh, what the, um, program already cost they're getting another 8.5 million and listen i don't have a problem with this it's just that i have a problem that this is necessary because i mean giving these kids safety to walking home from school i know that when i walked home from school back in my day um i got i got jumped before leaving school by some kids i didn't know Man. um I got, uh, you know, I was, I was, it was certain blocks that I was, I, man, I, I wasn't walking down them blocks. Um, I was taking a long way. Um, I know that um, it's in DC, it's always been tough, like leaving school and making it home. Um, so I don't have a problem with them, this program. I, I'm, I'm not, I'm not really against this program. But it's just sad that you need this shit, man. And the fact that you need it says so much about the people. Um, you know, it says so much about black people. Because this is the people that are going to hurt these kids on their way to the subway station, the black people. Right. Yep. At all times. The Safe Passage program under Mayor Muriel Bowser's Office for Public Safety and Justice has three to six workers at 48 schools in high priority areas in the district and at a metro station. $8.5 million is now available from the mayor's office to run the program. When we see uh, certain actions taking place that we know maybe a kid uh, could be in danger, maybe somebody's following him, uh, maybe, uh, you know, he's being bullied. 
uh, you know, we, we intervene. Gomez, who is a supervisor over five schools, says monitoring and protecting students at Czech is special. This is him back in 2012 at graduation. I went here. Yeah, boy, uh, it's, it's for me, I take, I look at it as a giving back to the community, back to the school. It's a program he wishes was around when he was growing up. It would have stopped a lot of, uh, a lot of crime that was going on under the area mostly gang. Assistant Principal Boone says time and time again, safe passage workers come to the rescue. We had an individual, an older gentleman who was pretty much harassing students. We were inside the building getting ready for dismissal. Um, and they called us immediately, let us know what was going on. We were able to get outside and basically reroute our students away from that individual so that MPD and those other groups could come and support him. And it wasn't any in interactions or conflicts. And support him. Because <laughs> that's what, that's what he needs. I mean, these people are fucking, they're, they're indoctrinated with this woke shit. Safe passage workers come to the rescue. We had an individual, an older gentleman who was pretty much harassing students. We were inside the building getting ready for gentlemen for dismissal. Um, and they called us immediately, let us know what was going on. We were able to get outside and basically reroute our students away from that individual so that MPD and those other groups could come and support him. And it wasn't any in interactions or conflicts. If they wasn't there, something bad could have happened. In situations where a safe passage worker suspects someone or something suspicious, they get school administration and the police involved. I believe that they are certainly the intervention. Acting Police Chief Pamela Smith with MPD says this program is a crucial partnership with the schools. Having safe passage, uh, the workers there alongside of us, they can share information with us. We can intervene in some of the conversations and things that they may be hearing that may be going on with some of the children. Especially with children who are hesitant to speak up. We have a super diverse population. I'll say roughly about 60% Latino. Some of them, they don't feel comfortable speaking to anybody else because maybe they're just new to the school or the country itself. But having guys like Gomez helps make a difference. They also are a voice for, you know, families or, or students who may not feel 100% comfortable with sharing things. They'll share it with Safe Passage, who will then share it with us, and then we can all sit down and kind of, you know, mediate situations before they escalate it. They're yeah. trying everything. God damn. <laughs> and this is necessary too. Like this is not like something that is like yeah. a bullshit program where yeah. it's like, you know, just dumb shit. You you literally need this. Yeah. I wish I had that when I was a kid. Hold it down for me, guys. <laughs> I'll be right back. <laughs> All right. Salute PN. Yeah, salute PN. Hey boo. Member for one month. Hey, but that that um that area um, hey, honestly, I, I I consider doing this. I ain't even gonna hold you. You know what I'm saying? Um, I might get labeled as a snitch, so I probably won't do it in my neighborhood. But uh, I consider. They used to uh, so on my side of town back in the day, all the schools are closed now. But we used to have. A high school, a middle school, and then an elementary school, and they all used to get released at the same time. And they they put that to an end, and they put it to where the high school got out an hour before the middle school, and then the middle school got out like forty five minutes before the elementary school. And in that time, they make sure that they had all the cops patrolling the area and shit. Oh yeah, that's smart sweeping them. Yeah, it's a good idea. We we always had it like that growing up. We never like the different grade levels always got out at different times. Yeah, I think I think they started doing that kind of shit when I was starting to go into high school because that's like when they started putting like uh metal detectors in the schools and all that type of shit. They started changing a lot of things. Yeah, but you know, actually, that was something. Um, I was trying to get people to do in DC when crime really, well, when it started to spike like 10 years ago before anybody was really paying attention. I always thought that that would be a dope idea to have men just posted, just men, like not even like, it don't gotta be a program, but just men just posted at the schools when they get out. 
Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, I tried to push that. Yeah, I tried to push that, you know what I'm saying, like years ago, but whatever. It don't be it don't be happening like that. Um, but that's a lot better idea than like you know, somebody with vests on and stuff like that. And like, it, it, I mean, I don't know if it's, it's better, but it would be nice if you could just get people from the community to just actually just be outside posted. Yeah, yeah. You know, and that should just be, it should just be something that comes natural, you know? Right. Your kids go there. Right, exactly. You, just warm, you know? Right, exactly. <laughs> like, that's the thing. You know, like, the area's fucked up. Be there for them. Yeah, and just, just show up so it doesn't. And then it just feels, yeah, it just feels more natural instead of, like, some little dudes with, like, vests on. And, like, it's it's hot. To some kids, yeah, that's good. You know what I mean? They look like, you know, somebody who can help out. And then to others, it's like, nah, I ain't no snitch. I ain't going to talk to you. You know what I'm saying? Right, <laughs> so, right. So it's like, but if you just got people from around the way, then the then the relationships can can happen, you know, a little bit more naturally for some of those other kids who are a little bit reluctant to speak to authority. Yeah. And then, you know, then you got some kind of organization of people in the community where they're going to talk about other things and find solutions for other stuff, small solutions. Right. right. You know, like there 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 is something that can be done about all this crap. But the only problem is, man, like real, real talk, like. You have to get inside the courts. You got to get inside the schools, man. You got to re-educate everybody. And it's going to take like 60 years before it even take effect. Yeah. You know, that's that's how far gone shit is, man. Yeah, I was uh, telling my man, he was like, yeah. I mean, I don't got no solutions, but I always say you just need a gang. Like in the Sun community, you just need a gang. You just need a gang of dudes, older dudes that look solid, that look tough, and they got to be visible. They got to be posted on the corner. But then, like, every weekend, they, they like, build a playground or something like that. Like, it's got to be a gang, and they got to look strong, But they and they got to be outside. And that's the only thing that's really going to be attractive to a bunch of younger men so that they can see a gang that's doing something more constructive. And they'll gravitate towards that, but they got to be visible. They got to be on the streets and, you know, they don't got to be for nobody necessarily, but people got to know, like, so the youngins would know if they messing around, they're going to have to answer to some, some older dudes who be outside, but it's no older dudes who be outside. They have nobody to answer to. They can run up and just rob women if they want to or beat up old people. They got nobody to answer to. And as long as that's the case, it's just going to be impossible to do anything. And and then eventually, eventually somebody's gonna be corrupt, you know. Yeah. <laughs> it, 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 it's it's stuff that sadly, you know, it's been tried over and over again. You know, you even got like the Detroit Three Hundred, you know, over here. Oh yeah, I heard about you know, that. Ox done stuff on them, and I mean, it ain't done shit. You know? What did uh? So like, I tell me, cause we had a joint Baltimore called um Three Hundred Three Hundred Man March. But what was it? We I heard about the Detroit 300. What were they doing? So the Detroit 300, man, they're just a bunch of OGs, man, that weren't living that life no more, you know, and tired of crime going on in the neighborhood. So they started doing like a little bit more than a neighborhood watch. They do like neighborhood patrols, you know, and hmm. they got the name because originally when they first started, like they got 300 guys, you know, right away that were down. And that's what they just called themselves. Oh yeah, yeah. That's kind of like what happened, yeah, in Baltimore. Um, yeah, I mean, don't get me wrong. Like you know, like when it first popped off, like I think it had a little bit of an impact. But you know, motherfuckers, uh, motherfuckers evolve and figure out ways to get around shit and do crime anyway. I'm pretty sure a couple of them guys got killed too. Oh yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, the thing is, it's hard to be close to the streets and not be in them yeah and i mean not only that but i mean if you're going to do anything you got to be firm and if you're going to be firm yeah you, know, you might have to you might have to knock somebody out yeah and i mean you know to to one of these young kids like you know like 
if even for me, even for me, you know, I'm an ex game banger. I take a lot of pride in that shit. You know, a lot of places where I go, people know, you know, I ain't for no games, but these younger kids, they don't know me and they yeah, don't, they don't give a fuck. Here. <laughs> and they, they, they didn't come up, you know, using fists like we did back in the day, you know, like for us to, for you to get killed by somebody, man, you had to fuck with somebody's family, money, yeah. you know, you had to be dealing with like, a large amount of dope, not just like no pounds or something like that. You know what I'm saying? You had to have some multiples. Yeah. So, you know, you had to owe somebody like 10 grand before they were going to fuck around and start threatening you and shit. You know, you might get beat up and shit like that, but you wasn't, you didn't have to worry too much about getting shot. Yeah, it's a, it's a whole new ball game. Yeah, I mean, like people got definitely got shot in the 90s. Don't get me wrong. It was a fucked up time. Oh, yeah. yeah you know, there, sure. there, there wasn't really senseless crime like these kids nowadays these kids are fucking crazy man crazy yeah yeah there's no rhyme or reason yeah, no I've, reason. I've seen these motherfuckers so i've had guns showed to me by teenagers but i've seen you know my best friend this motherfucker's six foot seven angry looking motherfucker man he's a nice guy but he looks angry and you know he's uh He's the dope man's dope man, you know. He's he's selling weed to all the fucking heroin dealers and all that shit. So this motherfucker yeah, yeah. knows everybody. Here's all the stories. Everybody knows him. This motherfucker goes to the gas station one day. I'm sitting in the car, man. You know, and he just looks over and like I said, he looks angry all the time. Fucking young kids like just pull out the gun, like I'll take care of you, cuz. And I'm mean, like, damn, like, and this is a six foot seven motherfucker, dog. Like, damn, you know, like yeah, he ain't he ain't no little boy. Like he looks at you like, oh shit. That's funny. Same thing uh, happened around my way. Actually, uh, somebody I came up with, grew up with. He was he was the man. Like you know, what I'm saying like he was the man. And da, 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 da. he was he was doing his thing. Some young boys rolled up on him, pulled out the strap on him. Like like that's like it's their territory. But it's like whole time, like nah, like it's he's the OG. You know? Right, he, right, yeah. yeah. It don't matter no more. It don't you Oh, yeah. Like I remember coming up, you know, you had them guys, you looked up to them and you know, like right. you, you just felt cool being around them. Like you know? shit. Yeah. Yeah. And now it's like, nah, we don't feel cool being around you. I'm gonna smoke your bitch ass. Like damn. Right, right. <laughs> they don't care, man. They don't care. But the crazy thing, that's the shit that used to irritate me though, where it was like like you I couldn't get no support from people who's like from from dc like i'm from the county that the suburbs okay cool but it was like all right like what can we do like whatever has to be done people got to be visible at the end of the day like you got to be visible in order for the youngins to like at least feel like there's something different out there for them to do like all yeah. this all the positive shit happens in these silos where don't nobody be knowing you know what I'm saying? Like the teenagers ain't gonna know. It's programs out here. It's every pro every kid in DC can be in at least two programs, but like they don't see them. You'll never see them nowhere. They're not visible. So I used to try and like talk to dudes and be like, Yeah, you know, dudes who swear they ate a man and they from this place and they from that place or whatever, whatever. All right, like what could we do that's visible? It just, just wasn't working, man. <laughs> just wasn't working you know yeah man no nah, like i ain't gonna, i ain't even gonna lie man a few years ago before i found ock man i used to have a little bit of hope and you know like the more i watch this shit man the more the, the less i have hope bro yeah and then, and then you know with this shit that just happened with my you know my homeboy his family and shit over the last year and it's like damn dude like all that shit happened real close to home like my neighborhood you know my stomping grounds like fuck man yeah but no nah, that's and that, and that ain't it, even it either i did another story where uh two random people got shot on a corner that happened uh, directly across the street from my mom's house and then there's another story where uh, a motherfucker got killed right in front of my apartment building and i was home and i didn't even hear the gunshots motherfucker got killed right in front God. of the building yeah, it's OD. Yeah, that's it's OD outside. Man, it's fucked up, dude. And then you don't be wanting, I don't be wanting to go nowhere. And you know what I'm saying? Like, I just, and then I, you know, I'll be with my, my little son. Like, my, my, my block is relatively chill. And like, 
the older dudes. There's a bunch of older dudes around here, so it's not a whole lot of too much craziness. But any direction, it just anything could pop off, man. Yeah, yeah, that's kind of how it is here, man. You know, uh, where I'm at, like I love my apartment. You know, it's a it's an old ass building, man. It's in the hood, but there ain't. It's quiet, man. Like it's yeah. real quiet. Yeah. Like one at like one street, you know, crossroad. It's got houses and shit. The other one has none. So like the only the only thing only like I gotta kick some crackheads out the fucking street every now and then. Fucking some people wait for their dealer to come up and yeah, junkies. Like, yeah, and yeah. down the street, you know, motherfuckers. Like I'm sure if I looked out the window right now, there's a hooker out there getting fucked or something. You know? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, just hood shit. <laughs> yeah, just basic hood shit. Yeah, yeah, but it's so fucking annoying though, man. Yeah, I feel it's you, hard, man. Like yeah. you know, there's kids around and shit, man. Get the fuck out of here. Right. And when I come home from work, that's when I say something because one of the motherfuckers be in my parking parking spot or something. So I'll just park. I won't say shit. And I'll just have an attitude. If they say something to me, it's a wrap. Like, yeah, I got an attitude. Get the fuck out of my parking spot. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? Right, right, right. I try to avoid it because I don't want trouble. But at the same time, it's like, you know, fuck you, man. Get the fuck out my shit. That's that ego shit, you know? Yeah, some of it, I think you probably understand. There's a small part of it that's a necessity. Yeah, yeah. It's, 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 it's like they gotta know you not to be fucked with because otherwise they're gonna yeah. keep trying to play you exactly, exactly. Yeah. i think i was here for a year and uh one day a motherfucker tried me man and uh the motherfucker uh he, he called me out man you know and i was like oh, hold up man like i'll be right back dog like you got me i like i got you dog I fucking, I ain't even gonna lie, man. I came, dropped off my fucking backpack and all my shit I had, man. I can't grab my fucking rifle, come downstairs. Like, where the fuck you at? That motherfucker peels out. Uh, all right. But as soon as he said, I got you, I was like, oh, nah, motherfucker. That's one thing I don't take lately. You threaten my life, man. It's on because I've had some close ones. I don't play that shit. Yeah. Um. Some people, for some reason, I mean, not for some, I, we discussed the reasons, but, um, unless they see it and that's not even just with violence it's almost like with everything if you look at like if you look at some porn pornos right everybody else japanese pornos um white pornos it's a storyline so they the setting may be something like they may be at a restaurant and the waiter may come to the table and you know what I'm saying? he may end up taking a chick in the back and fuck her, but there's a storyline. Mm-hmm. Black pornos, it start on the couch and they already fucking. <laughs> she, she's twerking out the gate. She just starts twerking. There's no lead up. There's no waste. It has to be. We have to. You have. We, we only um, can see can deal can can understand things that are in our face so when you dealing with some people especially tough ones or fake rough ones or whatever um that's why like like my hands are like stones right so what i do is like instead of shaking a lot of dudes hands i give them a dap like that because when i do when i give you this you feel that shit. You like, damn, this nigga's hands are hard, right? So it's like, I just do do little shit like that. So it's like, did somebody be like, what's up? I'm like, what's up, man? It's like, oh shit, like ah, like you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't, I don't do it hard, like the disrespect. But I just let you know, like, yo, these are stones, my nigga. Um, so it's like, yeah, you gotta let some men know. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah just absolutely. any way you can, you know what I'm saying? Any way you can, if you don't let them know, it's just they just they they have to like it's almost like you're doing them, you're setting them up. Like if you don't let a son man know, he gonna try you, and then if you ain't if you the wrong one to fuck with, then he gonna get fucked up in the game. And it kind of like is your fault for not letting them know because he yeah. can't help but to try you because he yeah. gotta know. You know what I'm saying? I yeah, see. that's exactly how it goes. <laughs> it's weird shit. It's weird shit. Yeah, but that's right. You know what I'm saying? Like it's it's like 
it, it, it's just like that's how they are, man. And 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 I've been now I live in Pennsylvania. And live, that's just how they are. It has nothing to do with a Detroit nigga or Baltimore nigga or systematic. Yeah. It. It's <laughs> just how they are, man. It's just how we are. We're, we're, that's how we are. And you know, um, it is what it is. And you got to deal with certain things the way they are. Some you can't fix everything, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, you can't fix everything. And and you and I lamented, man, I spent years, decades lamenting like, why are some people like this? Um, this is like way before this is in the, like the 2000s, right? Like, why are we like that? Like, why are we and and I never could understand, and I would attribute it to the same things that some people do. Well, you know, racism, and we. You know, we act this way because, you know, we got a chip on our shoulder because of racism or they put this stuff in our community and stuff. You think about all these reasons. But really, some people, with everybody, with everybody, if you're in the library, if you're in the fucking library, most people come into the library and they just conform instantly because they know they're there. Sun people, the librarian has to go over there to the sun table and say, you guys keep it down. You know what I'm saying? Like, they right. have to be, you, they can never just, you never not going to have to deal with them. If right. you're at the arcade, you're the fucking. On the bus. Man, if you're at the on arcade, the train. you're the bus. <laughs> if, you're, if, you're, if you're bus drivers, you're, if you're the mall security, like, wherever you are, if you're the authority figure, like Nate Wade says, of his parking space or his abode, you're the authority of that. They're going to make you do your job. You know what I'm saying? All right. Whenever you're the authority yeah. figure of everything, they will make you do your job. And most groups, you don't really have to do your job. You know what I'm saying? You just they just they they know they know they're in a museum. Right. Well, they know they know the you know what I'm saying? Right. Like they, know. they know you're supposed to be quiet in a library. <laughs> yeah. They know they in a um swimming pool with a bunch of kids, so you ain't supposed to be run no running at the swimming pool. Everybody knows that no peeing in the pool, no cannonballs. People just know that sons, you gotta say, Hey, hey, no more cannibal. Hey, stop running. Uh, hey, you know what I'm saying? You gotta put out the weed. Oh, almost yeah. almost no common courtesy. Yeah, and, and, and that's or, just and that's I mean a little bit. You show up at a party, they'll feed you, hand you some booze and all that shit. You know, there's oh, that yeah. kind of oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. know, yeah. as yeah, far definitely. as like just following some regular public rules, decorum, man. Man. yeah, public no, decorum. No, and I'm not saying all. Oh, I'm saying the person doing it yeah. is going to be son. Right, so right. Hey, yeah, but even those. Even the yeah. nice ones, even the nice ones, like are capable though. You know what I'm saying? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's the thing that you got to be careful with with us too, like because it could be any of us. It's not all. We're all capable. I mean, fuck shit, man. An argument pops out, man. You know, I just kind of slide my way to the back, like oh, let me uh, let me yeah, ease my way yeah, up out of nah, this. You're right, man. Is everyone? It's every one of us are capable, and we all know that. And it's just yeah, like, who has the most restraint? You know what I'm saying? Or how much can this son man take? You know what I'm saying? Like, a lot of us can take a lot. Or a lot of us have much more restraint. Well, some, some of us, you know what I'm saying? Depending on our, you know, what we're doing at this moment Damn. in life, profession, education level, and all other shit kind of kind of adds a little bit more to, you know, your lack of the pillars or whatever. We have a little bit more restraint when it comes to it. But yes. capable. Definitely capable. Yeah, but absolutely. Also, right. being a son too, like being a punk and being like being a bitch or something like being considered that is something that we struggle with internally all the time because yeah. you're expected to be so brazen. You're expected to be so brutish. Um, yeah, hot headed. Like like any kind of reason. Or rationale, or um, um, measuredness, or shrewdness. From a very young age, you learn that those traits are 
bitch ass and punk as shit. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And right. you learn that. You learn that from the first, the first thing, the first place you earn that you you learn that is in your home. Like literally, mm -hmm. if you got older sisters, mm -hmm. if you got an older mm -hmm. brother, you learn that shit. You learn that shit at three. <laughs> yeah, man. Literally. literally. I know, I know I was raised a lot different than a lot of gliders, man, but, you know, both my parents, they grew up in the hood, man, so, you know, coming up, I remember being, like, six years old, man, you know, a kid getting smart, my parents, but, man, beat his ass, you know, like, yeah. for real, that's how they did, and they, they told me, like, you know, you you gotta fight, and they, if they see me wrestling, and, like, I was on my back, man, man, they'd kick my ass, like, man, nah, you don't even play, that's how they, that's yeah. how they did me. Because one one thing about some people, and we saw that with Saudi Arabia. Well, I mean, with the uh, the video I did the other day on the way they're treated in Arab countries is like, if 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 the door isn't open, they not gonna open it. But if the door's cracked, they gonna kick it open. Yeah. So it's like like some people, yeah. If you if you let them know off the break, like it ain't happening. They usually will not try you, right? But if you give them a uh, inkling, man, they gonna take you for a ride. And listen, man, I've I've seen it. I've, I'm a son, man, so it's like I've abused people, man. I've 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 um been a fucking predator. I've been a narcissist. I've been all those things. And I've had all those things done to me by Sun Men. So I know that shit 360, man. And I know how sons are, man. Like, if you give us an inch, man, we going to take a fucking mile. We can't help it. You're and great. that's if they, listen, the way it is, man. An inch will turn into a fucking 200 miles. <laughs> One inch. <laughs> I'll, I'll tell you guys and what, though, I man. know it. Go ahead. I'll tell you guys what, though, man. You know, uh, I spent three years living with my grandmother out in the suburbs, man. And uh, just being a white kid that talked different to them, they all knew where I was from. So they all wanted to test me, man. Them motherfuckers out there, them white kids out there terrorized the shit out of me, man. They chased mm -hmm. me home from school, all kinds of shit. Jumped me if they caught me somewhere. Mm -hmm. Oh, man. Dude, I'm like, man, take me back home. Take me back home now. <laughs> where it's safe. Where I feel safe. Yeah, that's fucked up, ain't it? Yeah. Yeah, no shit. Yeah, yeah. Salute the PN, man. Uh, I can't send send that video to me, PN. I can't click on links that are in um for some reason it doesn't let you click on links on the um on super on chat. yeah, super oh, chat. God. I can't click it for, I wish I could, but uh um yeah, but yeah, and listen, man. Like, I like when I was in Boston, formative years. One of my best friends, a little white kid named Ernie, man. He wasn't no punk, man. Uh, he wasn't no bit. And his sister, older sister, she was a teenager. She was a, you know, she was she wasn't no punk. Like, I'm 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 not saying that gliders, are like you know, what I'm saying, uh, on like I'm talking about like some people will. Fucking kill your ass, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, no doubt. Like, no doubt. <laughs> I was just saying, you know, like like me being like me being white, you know, like growing up in the hood, like I had a little bit of problems, you know. But when I went out there, you know, I was nothing but the wigger kid, man, and I was white, yeah. so they they were gonna test me. If I was black, they wouldn't have fucked with me at all. They'd be like, oh shit, nah. Yeah, right. Just off looks, they wouldn't have fucked yeah. with you. Yeah, yeah, off rip, you know. I was, I was just pointing that out, like. Yeah, I yeah, think so, it's a little rougher dealing with them motherfuckers, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. White boy, I I do notice that like white boys will call each other out. Like even in in my town, like white boy, it, 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 white men, not, not even white boys, but white men. Like if 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 the if the other white guys parks in their spot, oh yeah, they gonna tell him if he doesn't shovel his snow. Yeah, they gonna tell him if you you know what I'm saying. If if, if trash ain't put out on the road, they gonna they. Mm -hmm approach each other with things that sons would never approach either like a son man would never tell another son man to shovel his walk or never tell another son man that 
stop putting his trash out on the wrong day or yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like, cause we know that that could lead to death. <laughs> right. <Almost> like <laughs> die behind that. Um, so it's like, yeah, white boys, they, they have a lot of latitude with each other. They call each other out on shit and yeah, nobody dies. Like there's no fight. It's not, it's nothing. They just, hey, you know, what they, they do, like, they use, they use that the some man's favorite word since 2020 <laughs> accountability. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, definitely. They would definitely tell to, to call each other out. They would definitely tell each other things that they don't like. I'm talking. I'm not talking about friends. I'm talking about like just people, neighbors, or yeah. I'm not, you know, what I'm saying like I'm not talking about like people that like they buddy buddy and shit. Like, hey, hey, pal, you know we don't throw cigarettes on the ground over here. I, I've been living over here for thirty years and never never seen nobody throw a cigarette on the ground. We don't do that type of stuff over here. I just that's their first interaction with each other. Yeah. Seth, man, you could die behind that, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, we begin with the Fox 5 exclusive. A woman stabbed and then her car stolen in Prince George's County. And this morning, a video you will only see on Fox 5 showing the moments before and after that crime happened. Yeah, police now say they do have a suspect in custody. Wow. She's live in Camp Springs, Maryland this morning with details about the arrest. And more importantly, the latest on the victim's condition. How's the woman doing, Mel? Uh, you know, she is recovering, clearly, physically, can't say ugh, what it's going to take mentally, you know, and, and people we've talked to, they're just really disgusted by all of this. I mean, you're just going to a carry out at eight o'clock at night to pick up some food. And this is what happens. It, it's, it's insane. Eddie Leonard. Eddie Leonard. Eddie Leonard. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. The one on Georgia and no, the one on Bladen's okay. is like my. My my, my that, that's my my one the one on Bladensburg. But I they got there. one on Bennett Road. In the um, Bennett, um, Bennett, Eddie Leonard. I know it's a Yums on Bennett, on on Bennett. The, the the one I know the one on Bladensburg is not too far from Bennett. Okay. Oh, maybe that's what I'm thinking about. Yeah, 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 yeah. Bladensburg, like Trinidad. 